Okay, the first video talked about subject searching in General One File, and now we're going to go on to the other type of searching that we can do, known as keyword searching, or if you've been through English 101, you might have heard it referred to as sticky word searching. And we have a couple of different ways that we can search in this database in that way. At the top of the screen here, you can see there is a search box. If I knew I was interested in articles that talk about tattooing and discrimination, it seems very reasonable that I would come up here and put in the terms that I am looking for and do a search. However, you will find that I do not find many articles. In fact, this was a very disappointing search. The reason for this is that library databases go with what you say, and if you type in tattooing discrimination, it is going to look for an article where the word tattooing is followed by the word discrimination. They're very exact and they do not cope well, and nor do they make good guesses. This database needs you to separate out your concepts with the word and. You can either make sure to type it every time you want to put a concept, separate them with the word and, or, and I find this to be easier on my end, I can just come to advanced search, and in advanced search this database will automatically put the ands in for you, so that you make sure that you get what it is you're looking for, because this is what you're looking for this concept of tattooing and this concept of discrimination. Now where is this searching? You'll notice there are a lot of places you can search in this database. At the top here we have two very similar types of searches. Basic search and keyword search are not exactly the same. They do slightly different things. Let's take a look at what basic search will do for us. It finds a good number of articles. We've got enough to work with here. This is a very reasonable search. And let's say we're looking for some magazine articles. A magazine article is usually friendlier, shorter, than than a journal article, although we did find a friendly and a short journal article, but as a rule, journal articles are much longer, and magazines are written for the average person, not a researcher, not a scholar. So here I am in my magazine articles, and I see, okay, that one seems like it's on topic, don't know about this one. Aha! Here's an article that appears to be on topic. Taboo tattoos. In HVAC, appearance still matters. So if I pull this article up, what I want you to notice is that what the database is going to do is it's going to let me know where my search terms show up. It will make them jump out for me. You'll see body art while orange is not as obvious down here as discrimination. There's one of my search words. What do I not see? I do not see tattooing. Now obviously this is an article about tattoo but they only choose to use the word tattoos or tattoo. The word tattooing does not appear in this article, and while that's fine, this is clearly a good article, this is not always going to be the case. When I go back and I say, well, what's this other one in the mind of the artist? This article, I see lots of orange words. I don't see either discrimination or tattooing, and it's a long article. If I come down, there's discrimination. So this is a review of a book called Bordered Lives, Transgender Portraits from Mexico. Clearly, yeah, that's about discrimination, but it's not about discrimination and tattooing. Tattooing is in a totally different place, well away from discrimination, and here's a book called New Old School, exploring the modern renaissance of old school and neo-traditional tattooing. This is not an article about tattooing and discrimination. This is an article that just happens to have those words in there. If you are using the basic search, you are going to have to be the one to look at it and decide, is it really on topic? Are the words where I want them to be? Is this really the best article for me? How However, there's another way we could have gone, and besides the basic search, there is keyword. And in this database, this is much better of a choice to search as keywords rather than as basic search. And it's a number one reason why I do not recommend using this header box up here, because keyword is not a choice for us up here. When I do my same search of tattooing and discrimination, now as keywords, I find a lot less stuff. And while I'm not necessarily thrilled with how many things I found, I'm seeing the workplace, I'm seeing employers, I'm seeing stigma against tattoos. When I take a look at these articles, tattoos and piercings, issues of body modification in the workplace, let's look for those red words, my search terms, discrimination, tattooing, discrimination. This is much more on topic. This is the sort of article I'm looking for. My terms show up. They show up more often. They show up where I want them to be. You don't want an article where your words show up one time. That's not on your topic. This is what I'm looking for.
Now is the moment, though, where we might want to reevaluate the terms we're using. Are these the best words? Is it better to use tattoos? Because you'll notice tattoos shows up in the title of all three of these articles. Let's go back and change out my tattooing for tattoos. And these databases are very literal. They look only for what you tell them, just like we saw before. If I switch that one word, I find a lot more stuff. There's the same articles I saw before and other ones, some really great great looking articles. But this makes me wonder, besides tattoos and tattooing, is tattoo the best word? There is a way that I can get all of these variations and not worry about is this the best choice and that's what's known as truncation. And in this database it is an asterisk or that little star above the number 8 on your keyboard, so shift 8, and I put that right on top of tattoo. It's right at the point at which tattoo could go in different directions. That is the point where the S or the ing would show up. And it says, I really want to make sure that I am getting every variation on that word because I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. And that is the broadest but still very focused search that I can do for tattoo. Now I've got a whole bunch of magazine articles. Let's go take a look at them. And so what do I find? I've got some interesting things about hiring, absolutely, discrimination, some of the things that have shown up before. I've got this really interesting title here, Spotlight on a Euro S Body Art. That is a very strange title. Seems interesting though, so let's go take a look at it. All right, it is a full text article. I can read the whole thing. I'm curious to see what's it going to talk about, and I can see it seems good. It's about dress codes and personal appearance, work clothes, work rules, and I know that it has my words tattoo or tattoos or tattooing, and it has the word discrimination in it. So this is my article. This is a nice article. Not too long. Again, magazine articles tend to be shorter. With every full text article in this database, I've got the tools box over here on the right, which lets me do all of the usual things you might expect. Emailing, downloading, printing, saving. Downloading is an mp3 because because why not? And the number one tool that most people tend to use is the citation tools. This database does have a source citation box at the very bottom, and this is usually what they call MLA 7th edition. So if you came to that citation tools, you will notice that for the MLA 7th edition, you're going to see something very similar to what was down at the bottom. I also have the addition of APA here. Please remember, no library database does a really great job of this. You will notice that in both cases, they start with the title. I can very clearly see the name of the author of this article. If I see by somebody, I know someone wrote this article and that information belongs in the citation. Please feel free to use the database's tools, but bear in mind that they are occasionally flawed. What have we done today? Well, we've done subject and keyword. You've seen both of the videos. You know how to use this database to its full extent of subject and keyword, but I can admit and agree with many people who find that general one file very overwhelming. It's, it's too much for some people because it has so many articles. And I think that that tends to come from people who aren't using it to its fullest capability, who aren't really doing the best searches they could. If you do a search that results in 10,000 articles, then clearly that's overwhelming, but you shouldn't let it go with that. There's ways to make it better, and knowing how to tweak it will only come with practice. Just like any sport you've ever played, you don't get better at it without practicing it. Truly, if you're having a tough time, that is why there are librarians here. Please ask us if you need help using any of our databases.